they were kind, kind of dusty. And I took this one particular vase and I displayed it prominently uh, next to the entrance to the lesbian imagination section uh, of the exhibition. So we have this Greek calpis, at the same time we have Catherine O'Keefe, a series of photographs and many contemporary lesbian artists from Central and Eastern Europe, plus the iconography of Diana in Baroque and late Baroque paintings. This is a close-up of Greek, Greta Garbo, a Polish poster of the Queen Christina movie with Greta Garbo from 1934. And this kind of visual pressures you can find exactly in the collection of national museums because they have, this is, national museums are like cabinets of curiosities. Power just to say some people will have to go to. Yes. I'm going to stop right now for questions. Because we have, you stop me because we have five minutes, uh, some people will have to go, yes. Um, so the examples you've showed are, are mostly, you know, uh, single exhibitions. Yes. And I'm curious, uh, I'm curious how you define the, the criteria for what it means to queer a museum. Uh, we can't define it. I hate definitions. Well, I, so sorry, uh, wait, but... but uh, but you know what you mean. How do you... Well, so you say queer in the museum, not queer in the exhibition? And I'm saying queer in the museum, the yeah, entire yeah. museum. So that is why I, I've, I've talked about queer in the museum, but it means that you need access to the vast collection of the museum, and then you go through this collection, and you look for art pieces or examples of visual or material culture that can be interpreted from the queer point of view. And I'm absolutely for freestyle queer curating, not looking necessarily for artists who are gay or lesbian or who are transgender, but looking at the themes, at the innuendos, at the atmosphere, on the bodily representations. So queer whatever you want to queer. Don't be strict about it. So this would be my approach. And if you have this kind of historical uh, art material and the ac access to a vast historical material, it gives you enormous curatorial pleasure of looking on at images of love, eroticism, embodiments or suffering, and you can juxtapose them, put them together to create variety of historical and contemporary narratives. And I decided to bring contemporary art because LGBTQ rights are such a topical subject in the region that it brings up the political aspect of queer curating as well through contemporary art and artists that deal with the struggle around human rights as queer rights. Yes? Um, you mentioned that uh, you aim to make queer art accessible. Yes. So what is the idea? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. You wanted to have a popular show? Yes. Okay. We are looking at my at some transgender works from the collection or from the museum. Uh, when the museum announced first uh, that they are doing queer exhibition in the National Museum, they announced it six months before the opening. Uh, it caused a lot of uh, controversies, and actually, it was divided by the parliament by the national parliament, and of course the church got involved as well, because Poland is a very heavily conservative country from a religious point of view, and church is part of the politics, the Catholic church. Uh, so bishops opposed the exhibition, and there was a debate in the parliament, uh, but finally, Ministry of Culture, you have to remember that it was a different time at the time, uh, relatively liberal government was in power. Uh, and the Minister of Culture decided that he's not going to, it is up to the Minister of Culture to some extent, right, when you have this kind of national institution. And the Minister of Culture decided that he's not going to censor the exhibition, that he's going to trust the director, Piotr Piotrowski, and the exhibition was possible to be organized. It, it wasn't stopped by the debates on the, in the parliament and by the, all the attacks from the far-right pundits and uh, politicians and, and the bishops as well. So the exhibition got an excellent PR through the controversies, uh, but the PR had a negative element as well, because as I mentioned, all the corporate sponsors withdrew. Uh, they didn't want to finance the exhibition. So I, was, I was very disappointed because you quite often hear from 
from New York or from London or from Paris about uh, Coca-Cola or uh, companies like this financing, financing uh, queer sport events or something like this. But when it comes to country when this subject is still contested and difficult and kind of um, unpleasant on a variety of uh, levels, then they never come in and they are not helpful. Uh, so that is why it was possible we had to use only the public money, which is the taxpayers' money, which I kind of like uh, yes, from, from this point of view. So it was an excellent PR, which unfortunately took all the financial uh, powerful corporations from the exhibition because they were scared to finance it. But the excellent PR created a lot of buzz around the exhibition. So when the show opened, it was very well attended. And uh, um, this is not big number for London, but it was a big number for Warsaw and the National Museum. Around 50,000 people showed, saw the exhibition without any interruptions. There were some attempts to censor the exhibition because um, probably the most controversial piece uh, was by uh, Alexandra Polisiewicz, a Polish lesbian artist. Um, she did a video installation. She went to a confession in a church, confessing her lesbianism to a priest and she had a conversation with the priest, which was not very friendly because the priest wanted her to, to stop, to go straight, right? And she recorded the conversation. And then uh, she played it out in a confessional booth, like uh, installation arrangement uh, in the space um, of the lesbian in, uh, imagination section. And of course, there is the mystery of confession, the secrecy of confession, which is very important in, in the Catholic rituals and she kind of broke through it, exposing the confession. And the bishop wanted again to censor this piece, but Piotr Piotrowski <coughs> disagreed and uh, he decided to have the exhibition. Uh, he was always very, very, very secular as an intellectual and as a curator, which is quite unusual for Poland. Not all of them are like this. Uh, so it wasn't censored. So it was very well received uh, in terms of the audience. It was a friendly exhibition from this point of view because I managed to, create, to put together many interesting looking uh, figurative representations, not always the best in terms of the quality, the artistic quality, but always visually interesting and always dealing in kind of obvious way with homoeroticism or queerness or transgenderism. Uh, but what is significant about the exhibition is that it got an enormous international attention, like enormous international attention, because everyone was surprised how it is possible to have a major queer show at the National Museum in Poland, a country which is considered, and this is true in Poland, which is religious fundamentalist, which is conservative politically, and where you have art censorship. We do have a lot of art censorship all the time. How it is possible to have something like this in Poland? So that is why journalists from all over the place, including Canada and Australia, got interested in the exhibition, especially that it was the first exhibition ever that queered the entire collection of the National Museum on such a scale. 